You can hear the children all around me. I'm literally at the school right now, volunteering. What's up? Current subscriber, new subscriber. Say hi. Hi. Say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Don't look at the game. Hi, everybody. <laughs> That's my son. We're sitting here at the table right now. We're eating his lunch. We're actually in the classroom. They couldn't go to the lunchroom. Wonderful, youthful voices around me. I would videotape, but that'd be weird, so I just thought I'd just do the voice. I'll put this on my YouTube. I was going to videotape, but it's not appropriate to videotape around kids. Yep, sitting here with Ethan, eating, uh, let me see what we got here, eating yogurt, strawberry, banana, it's a weird lunch, you got carrots, which you probably ain't gonna touch, you like carrots? Oh, oh. Zion, no, your hands we got no. blue raspberry lemon, what is this? This not yogurt, it's supposed to be a slushy, a smoothie, a slushy. Well, I'm be getting out of here in a minute. I'm not going to say it again. I'm going to get ready for work. Wait a minute. Just wait. I like that shirt again. What's your shirt say, man? I know it says swag. What does it say at the bottom? I can't see it. What does it say? Light up the streets? Okay. What artist is that? You know what artist that is? You know what rapper that is? It's who? Oh. I don't know who that is either. Look familiar though. I like that sweater. Look like 21 Savage. So it look like. Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining in, coming in. Sitting with the youth, volunteering in my son's school. Got to work together, can't complain. When you're on the inside, you see the deal. brothers and sisters that was uh my son and my god children that i volunteer with that you uh, you guys always hear me talk about and uh welcome to another edition of ebx discussion and book session and i'll be speaking on a little bit about 
volunteering. I just wanted those to hear me interacting with the children. And um, it's kind of it's kind of challenging to get footage, you know, because you can't videotape when the school, you know, they, they don't just don't look right. So I try to get audio when I can. But, you know, a lot of times I'm tending to the children and, you know, got to keep focus because, you know, you got you only got two eyes, but you got, you know, 10 or more children to keep your eye on. It's probably more than that in the class, you know. So, you know, when you're interacting, I don't have a lot of time to be messing with the phone. So you got to focus. So just wanted to get a little bit of a, you know, the youth on there. And I played little intro clips of children before I volunteer with. So thank those for coming in, you know, to, a, you know, as I said, another book session. And um, The Contender, and this is episode four, if I'm not mistaken. And I put three and two in the end screen and so on and so forth. And just keep following along. And, um... Yeah, because I said I want to do more of these book sessions. And um, if you hear a little little interference from the background, that's I'm, uh actually stay across the street from a school. And um, it's kind of nice to hear the youth play outside. I remember my last uh, apartment when I was living with my brother, uh, which name is Marlon, Marlon Farmer, my younger brother. I got two brothers, one on my mom's side, one on my father's side. But my brother and I had an apartment together. And um, it was by a school also. It's just something about hearing the youth play. It's just refreshing, you know. So, you know, I don't know. It's, I think God, you know, we all know our journey and our purpose, you know, if we're aware, you know. And one's purpose is to connect with children. You know, I've had children. And, you know, when you've had children, you kind of have a better understanding, overstanding, and understanding, even through the challenging times. But that's why I like to do these book sessions and volunteering. You know, as challenging as it can, it seems, it's worth it. You know, seeing the change in our youth is real. It, it, man, it's it's very, very rewarding. You know, it's a good feeling, you know, when you really get involved. So that's why I like to play those little clips and those little audios to let people hear what the teachers, the faculty, the principals, volunteers, what they go through. And it's any school, you know, some schools worse than others. But this school, my son, Ethan, and uh, my goddaughter, Chloe, they both go to this school. And um, so it's wonderful. And I interact with all the children. You know, I don't I don't alienate the other children. I talk to all of them, like when I'm in the lunchroom, because I, I volunteer in the hallway, as I said in the past. And um, and I'm a hall monitor, you know, and I keep I get the stragglers that try to hang out in the hallway and, I, you know, get them back to class and, Talk to them if need be, you know, and um, and I also help in the lunchroom and, you know, help clean up after the kids and all that and just keep an eye on them and, you know, make sure they're behaving and stuff like that. And I interact with all of them and my son, you know, just, as well as his siblings, you know, got to spread the love, you know, and, and children, they remember that. Like I always say, that righteous present, man, uh, give us a rewarding future. So that's why we do righteous things in the present, you know. Like our ancestors did, the righteous ones. That's why I honor thy ancestors. Those who fought so very hard to get many of us in that great divine space. Excuse me. That great divine space. Those who are righteous, you know. Those that fought through tooth and nail. So, you know, and um, again, thank those that have been riding along. Current subscriber, new subscriber. Anybody that view, I salute you and thank you. And salute to all the great content creators and reaches and teachers out there the real ones that's doing their thing you know it's bringing information things that can help us in life to come because man having righteous things ready for you like it's like in a divine bank you know just 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 store it up all the righteous good things we do just store it up hold on for a minute my phone just fell all right sorry about that yeah, but thank those for coming in to another book session and um, EBX discussion. And a uh, salute to Lord Lamont that has been my son I'm proud of, that's been doing well. Anyone in our families that we held dear, uh, that transition, may they rest in peace and in power. My family and whoever's family's listening, you know, got to keep their spirit alive, you know. All right, I want to get to this book I've been reading, you know. Let's get this book session going. And um, and I'll, talk, I'll speak, uh, you know, a little bit, you know, Speaking can sometimes be a journey, as I like to say, so there will be many things that will come up out of one's subconscious as we go along. But I'll speak on volunteering, and uh, let's get started on this book session. In the book I've been speaking on, The Contender, Episode 
four. When I last left off, now the main character is Alfred. I'm going to say all the characters. It's Alfred, Hollis, Sonny, James, and it was a Rick. And these are not characters. This is a real life event. I keep saying characters. These are like real people in this book. Real life event, if I'm not mistaken. All right, it's James. The main character is Alfred. James is his best friend. And they were childhood friends. And uh, we got Major, Sonny, Hollis, and Henry. And um, when I last left off was page 15. And we're in chapter 1, if I'm not mistaken. And Hollis was looking for his friend, his best friend, James. And they, and, um, they used to play in this cave on the playground when they were young, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, and that's where I left off. And the cops, and I remember in the neighborhood, the cops, the sirens, were blaring and um so they had to scatter because of an alarm that went off and it was alarm that uh alfred didn't know was on it was supposed to be off when he closed down the shop or something like that and he didn't mean to not shut it off and the alarm triggered somehow and the cops came to the shop or the place where he worked and um i guess james ended up getting caught or something like that so we're gonna start off and major hollis and I think Sonny and Henry, I think they were somewhat bullies of their childhood. And when we last left off, they jumped Alfred because they thought it got James caught by the police. So we're going to start there. All right. Now, he was looking for James. Here we go. It was pitch dark. Remember, they were in that cave that they used to play in as, as children, as childhood. And I think this is when they were young. So let's go. All right. We're on page 15. It was, remember, this is the contender. Uh. Uh, but written by Robert Lipsight. All right. <clears throat> it was pitch dark. He's looking for James, his best friend, Alfred. Remember, Alfred's the main person in this book. The big rock was hard to see against the black sky. Remember, he's looking for James. The transistors were silent. Those were the, the radios they had playing out through the neighborhood. Remember, everybody always used to have their radios back then. But when the cops came to the neighborhood, there were no transistors playing. So... As he's out looking for James, he hears he, he noticed the transistors were silent. All right. He crept. This is Alfred. He crept carefully until no one who might be watching. He was hiding in the cave till the cops were gone. But James was nowhere to be found. All right. Here, start over. The transistors were silent in the neighborhood. He crept carefully until no one who might be watching could tell where he had come from. He was hiding in the cave. Alfred. Then he stood up and walked toward home. The side streets were quieter now. Remember, because the cops were in the neighborhood. His legs began to lose their stiffness. He turned He turned down the street. His legs were stiff because he was cramped up in the cave. And then here comes here comes Major and, the, and Hollis. Remember, I said they were the neighborhood bullies. He turned down the street. Why, it's good old Uncle Alfred. He froze Major's arms were folded across his chest. Now, Major was a, was a butthole, I take it, from back then. He was a big guy, so his arms was folded. And and chest. And Hollis' lips were pulled back in a buckled tooth grin. They were making fun of Alfred. Where's James? Where's James? Mimic Major. He was mimicking uh, Hollis. All right. Mimic Major. They caught him. They caught him. You, he snarled Hollis. Pushing Sonny toward Alfred. Okay, this was Sonny, Major, and Hollis. They were all mad at Alfred because they think it was his fault that he got caught by the cops. All right. They caught him. You snared Harless, pushing Sonny toward Alfred. And then the four of them were in a tight pile of swinging arms. They were jumping on Alfred. And legs kicking, cuffing, punching. And Alfred, and Alfred smashed into the pavement under Sonny. And the elbows and fists began crashing into his sides, his head, his stomach. You knew about that alarm, grunted Major, hammering down on him. I forgot. I would have stuttered Alfred, tasted, tasted his own blood, warm and salty. And he he felt, let me see, warm and salty. He And he felt the pavement. Okay, we're switching over to page 16. And he felt the pavement scrape the skin off his shoulder blades. He struggled, trying to kick upwards, but the three of them were too much, bearing down, slugging, stomping. Dang, 
So three of them jumped him. And then Sonny, Hollis, and Major, they jumped him. Split, hissed Major, and they were standing. We'll get you, and they were gone. Far down the block, two, two patrolmen, one black, one white, walked lightly, looking over each, other, each other's shoulder. Glancing up at the rooftops, Alfred dragged himself into the alley and crawled painfully behind a garbage can. He swallowed back his nausea as a rat scurried over his arm. Ew. Squealing. The two policemen whirled at the sound. Let me see. Whirled at the sound. Hands on their guns. They looked at each other, shrugged, and walked and walked on. So they heard the rat scurry over his arm. Maybe he's in the alley, but they didn't see Alfred. Alfred fainted. All right, that was 16. We're on to chapter 2, page 17. All right. He woke up in his aunt's bed, blinking against the white glare of the morning sun. Now, Alfred stayed with his auntie, and I read a few episodes, a couple of episodes back. I think his mom died, and that's how him and James became best friends. He still hasn't found James, by the way. That's why they major Sonny and Hollis beat him up because they think it was because of him he got caught, like I said. But that's how they became best friends because James... I think James' father left him and Alfred's mother died, if I'm not mistaken, or I could have it crisscrossed back. It was something like that, and that's how they became, that's how they bonded, and that's how they became best friends because they both lost a parent. All right, so that's how Alfred ended up staying with his aunt. Okay, here we go. He woke up in his aunt's bed, blinking against the white glare of the morning sun. He felt her, her call, her call house, her calouse, her, I can't read that. Let me see. Some words I won't be able to pronounce, uh, pronounce sometimes, forgive me. He felt her calloused hand, this calouse, calouse, I've never seen that word, C-A-L-L-O-U-S-E-D. Calloused hand, calloused, call out, calloused, calloused hand moved gently over his swollen jaw. Uh, long before he saw her red rimmed eyes peering down at him. Uh, I, forgive me for saying that word wrong. I've never seen that spelled out like that. It's C A L L O U S E D. Calloused hand. Calous. You see the calloused or calloused. All right, I'm gonna move on. All right. Uh, anyway, she rubbed her hand gently over his swollen jaw. Remember, they jumped him and beat him up. Long before he saw her red rimmed eyes peering down at him how do you feel alfred honey her voice usually so warm and light sounded husky and tired i'm okay aunt peril that's right and she was in the beginning of the book in the intro part if i'm not mistaken in the uh, last couple of episodes all right i'm okay aunt pearl thank the lord she lord thank the lord she lowered herself to the edge of the narrow bed we were so scared for you, Alfred. Prayed all night. Prayed to God and to your sweet mama. Yep, I, I was right. His mom died. Okay. Mama, rest her soul. Got her right down. Got right down on. Okay, we're going over to page 18. Got right down. It's okay, Aunt Pearl. I'm okay. He moved his legs under the sheet. Then his arms numbed aching pain everywhere but everything moving nothing broken mm, yeah because they beat the crap out of him. what happened alfred when henry and mr john carried you when men when oh yeah okay what happened alfred when henry and mr john carried you henry henry he found you you was wandering around with your eyes shut and he went and got his daddy so henry must have been a good guy and got his daddy to help carry you home. So Henry wasn't in it. It was Sonny, Major, and Hollis. Those are the bad guys. All right, he found you. Henry found him. Was wondering, because Alfred was wandering around with his eyes shut, and he went and got, okay, and let me see, went and got his daddy. Henry went and got his daddy to help carry you home. So Henry and his dad carried Alfred. What happened, Alfred? The uh, old stone fence of Lennox, Aunt Peril, I was walking on it, and uh, uh, a big dog jumped up 
knock me off. So he lied to his aunt what really happened to him. Uh, uh she said, but but he could but he could see by her eyes she knew he was lying. Yep. She turned and he he saw his three little cousins jammed in the in the doorway staring at him. You heard what you heard what happened. Now you go out and play. Go ahead. Give Alfred a chance to rest. Charlene, you be sure you're all back for supper. Miss Miss Everson's had Miss Everson's having a party. Miss Everson's Mrs. El, Elver Elverson's having a party. Okay. E L V E R S E N Poster V S. All right. Mrs. Elverson having a party. And I'll be bringing home all kinds of good things. The twins, that's right, because the, the kids were twins. So the twins was Charlene, and I didn't and I didn't see the other name. So he, his cousins were twins. All right. And I'll be bringing home all kinds of good things. The twins began to edge back, but Charlene kept staring. It seems, it seems to Alfred that her eyes were red rimmed too. Go on now. Aunt Pearl waited until they had clattered until they had clattered out of the apartment and down the tenement stairs before she turned back to alfred she was she was frowning james was arrested last night oh they did catch james remember remember uh sonny hollis and major beat him up because they thought it was his fault james got caught all right so james got arrested that's his best friend james was arrested last night alfred for trying to break into epstein's i know oh he did try to break in i guess you know about it you know about him going yes but you wasn't with him that that's right you was with him that right that's right he wanted you to go that that right he wanted you to go that right when he didn't answer she leaned closer who beat you alfred i fell off the fence she shook her head her hands again on his aching face oh alfred it's like you're my own son i know you try so hard you you so good i know it ain't easy living here someday someday we're gonna move away alfred and we she began to cry softly mm, mm, mm. i gotta read that again frowning james was let me see start at the bottom. aunt pearl wanted aunt waited until they had waited to the, the twins the kids to leave out of the uh, apartment and down the tenement stairs before she turned back to alfred she was frowning james was arrested last night alfred for trying to break into epstein's i know you knew you knew about it him going yes but you wasn't with him that right is that right that's right he wanted you to go that right when he didn't answer she leaned closer. Who beat you, Alfred? I fell off the fence. She shook her head, her hands again on his aching face. Oh, Alfred, it's like you, you my own son. I know you tried so hard. You so good. I know it ain't easy living here, living here. Someday, someday, we're going to move away, Alfred. And we, and she paused. She began to cry softly all right we're gonna end right there we on page 19 it's, this is a good book it really is it's interesting and again there'll be other books that i'll read and uh, i'm just starting with this one and again this book is from uh my goddaughter skyla you know uh who's doing good and uh, uh may she you know be prosperous in her life as well as my other god children and my biological children and uh so this has been another book session and uh andor ebx discussion and um man i whoo i got into that I, I almost man i ain't gonna lie I, I feel like i wanted to water up you know it's it's really an interesting book and it's based on real life events if i'm not mistaken you know so and there's other books that uh robert lipsight made let me see if i can get back to the intro part so i can read let me see i gotta keep that page remember that was page we're going to start back on page 18. Let me see. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. I take that back. Let me see. What, what did I say we were? Excuse me, folks. All right. Let me see. Yep. Okay, yeah. 
right there that's what we yeah we're gonna start back on 19 after she started crying yep 19 but i want to go in the intro and i'm gonna read the other books that he has see if i can find it let's see him go to the intro excuse me brothers and sisters thank you for coming in to another book session and or ebx discussion and i'm gonna speak on i'm gonna speak a little bit more on volunteering all right let me see i'm trying to he got he had a list of books other books that he's written all right okay all right i think this is it right here all right, brothers and sisters, other books by Robert Lipsight, uh, The Brave, The Chief, Warrior Angel, and One Fat Summer. I got to find those books, too. Yeah, so again, thank those for coming in and um, to another book session. And uh, remember, Aunt Peril was crying softly. That's where we left off. And um, remember, reading, I've be, I been meaning to mention this, that reading is good. It's good for memory. It keeps the mind sharp. And um, if you want to know if that's true or not, look it up. You know, reading is fun to the mental. It can be fun too. Also, don't look at it as a, don't think of, of it as reading. Think of it as a journey, like our life. And like when we speak and stuff like that, and we're doing things creative and trying to come up with solutions in our lives. That's the part of our brain we have to tap into. So that's how we look at reading. You know, it's a journey, you know. As I said before, I'll say it again. Sometimes we don't choose books. Sometimes they choose uh, choose us as well as knowledge and seeking peace and being positive and making a righteous impact in our community. And the reward is the result of those we help along the way and, and help develop them, brother or sister, family member, to become generals like our youth, you know. And um, that's why I played that at the beginning. I just wanted to inspire one, whether it's in your family I always say start right where we are, you know, and just throw that righteous pebble in that pond and watch that ripple come back. And, and the icing on the cake is we, man, we righteously affect those along the way and make them become leaders. You know, we 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 practice on, you know, being leaders and we have a leader spirit and we help others to become leaders themselves. You know, I've said that before, you know. Come a long way. A lot of us have. We've come a long way. My family, Lord Lamont, brothers and sisters I've met in the world and online. My family, man, a lot of us have really come a long way. Be thankful where that we're in that divine space that a lot of us have, man, came through fires to get to. You know, so again, I'll keep volunteering. And I volunteered yesterday. Uh, I was supposed to do it Tuesday. I didn't make it. I was a little tired, but I did go yesterday, which was Wednesday. And I, I, some days it can be smooth. Some days it can be challenging. I have to say, folks, yesterday was a little challenging. You know, kids are going to be kids. We're talking about fourth graders. But I always I always keep that future in the back of my mind. You know, I always keep that in my mind, you know, my subconscious that, you know, think of how the, the youth that we help today will remember us tomorrow. And that's what I always think about. You know, that's why. I, I always, my mom always says this everything happens for a divine reason i'm telling you man god just put us in certain situations sometimes we might not understand or overstand or understand and remember there was a time i didn't even know about that word understand i learned that from a great brother you know i always take things and jewels i've learned from my family brothers and sisters i always incorporate into my life i never forget it because as i used to like to say we learn from a teacher. It un it's unfortunate sometimes we only feel good from a preacher, unless it's a righteous, real preacher. But we need teachers, not preachers. Real talk. That's just one's opinion, you know, because we learn from a teacher, a real like-minded brother or sister have, that have put in that work, the research, and got facts, and, and man, and know their stuff. Man, that knowledge from a real teacher, it sticks with you forever. I'm telling you. I'm a prime example of other teachers I've learned from, and we pass that baton on to others, even whether it's someone in our own age bracket or, or youth, you know, or someone that's just want to grow, you know, because I always like to say, folks, it could take a lifetime to get to a place of self-awareness. I'm telling you, it, 
it can be challenging, you know. So it, it, it don't happen overnight for some of us, you know. But be thankful if we get to a, a, a space of clarity and having divine thoughts and creativity and, and um, integrity. That's what leads us to help one to help the youth and being involved in the community. And I'm telling you, I love it. It's like the more I do it, the more I get involved. And, and I will pick up more days in the future. I, I promise I'll do that. Try, I'm trying to work my way into it, you know, because I'm, I, you know, because I always talk about impulses and I'm trying to make sure I don't just say I'm going to do something and make sure I know I want to do it. So I'll follow through, you know, because we, we can get stuck in that because I, I have gotten better on overcoming procrastination, but I'm still kind of working in that area. So that's how we overcome things when we just honest with ourselves and keep focusing on the areas that we're having challenges in and. We, we get done with that and we take a little bit at a time, step by step, you know. So, but again, you know, when you volunteer, some days it's going to be smooth. Some days it'll be challenging. And yesterday was a little challenging. You know, it's a couple of the kids was fighting. It wasn't nothing really serious. Again, just, you know, fourth graders, kids. We talking about nine, ten year old, you know, they're going to do what they do. But again, I wouldn't change it for the world. And I show all of them the same kind of love i don't treat any of them different than the other you know i don't like you know you know treat my son different than the other i'm here for my son nobody else no they're, like i say when we in these vicinities of volunteering with these children they're all our children because they're you know how they are will affect how our kids are so we have to kind of get into the hearts and the minds of the youth that's around our children you know, that we send to these schools and daycares and stuff. We have to get to know the other children, too, you know, in the educational way. You know what I'm saying? And get to the core of them, you know, get to the core, see why they behave a certain way. So we'll kind of, I mean, it, it, violent, and another thing, we know what's going on with our youth. You know, we, we, you know, we don't have to be guessing and stuff. So that's another good reason to volunteer, you know. And even if you're not, you know, I always give this advice to, to parents that, that's working every day or going to school and, you know, and you got kids in school or daycare or something, drop in once a week. You have to, you have to get involved. You have to the best way we can. Again, always consider those that have a busy life because this life will have us like that. But we have to make time though. We can, we have to make time. You know, we just can't keep, okay, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Okay. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I used to do that too. We can get stuck in that in order to keep going and, and on and on years on end. Got to watch that, you know. That's why I said we got to be a Neo and skirt, slow things down, get a perspective on things, you know, build our strength back up, stay rejuvenated. Don't stay getting wrapped up in this rat race we always talk about. And that's what being a Neo is all about. And again, I see Neos all over the place. We got, I got Neos in my family, you know, even though things aren't always perfect. But one thing I'm proud of that Great Divine has given uh, that's in my family's DNA that, you know, for the most part, we're a strong family, healthy family. I'm, I'm so thankful for that because there's a lot of families that are not fortunate like that, you know. So I called on that great protection and that great divine bring prosperity and some kind of solution and, you know, uh, uh, and strength in families that's, you know, maybe have the single family or single dad or single mom, you know, or even if it's two parents that's together to have a challenge, you know. I just, man, call down protection on any family that's having any struggles with their youth or anything in their family. That the great divine comes in there and, and help them the best way they can in any challenge that they're having, you know. So that's what we do. We got to put out that good energy. So that's just some things I wanted to speak on. Like I said, speaking can be a journey. You know, you never know what will come up in the subconscious. But you know it's going to be something worthy, something real. And uh, something authentic when we when we locked in to that great divine zone. So that was some pages I wanted to read from the book. Remember, that was the last the last page is 19. And where we left off was Alfred's aunt, aunt Peril was crying because she really cared about Alfred. And um, it's wonderful. Like I said, um, it's good. This is good. That's why I do this, too, because I know I might have some youth that might be listening. And, um, and I know sometimes I might be you know, cursing on here sometimes and, you know, and sometimes I might use a little profanity in, in the, in the, uh, in my music, but, you know, sometimes that's just come from having a little edge, but at the core, you know, 
is teaching, reaching and teaching and trying to reach the souls and inspire one. That's it. Young brother, young sister, older brother, older sister, you know, and because it's, it's all what all matters is what's at the core, what's at the heart, you know. So you can't outmaneuver that great divine anyway. So anyone that goes against that, that magnificent, powerful, great divine, you're a fool, you know. I would never think. I'm better than the great divine or I'm better think I'm better than people or nothing like that. No, because that's that's being conceited, arrogance and all that stuff. Mm -mm, that's all toxic. You know, we got to stay as righteous as we can possibly be, you know, and then the deep spiritual will come. So I'm going to keep volunteering. I'll keep those updated and I'll keep helping and working with the youth at my son's school, you know, and a uh, salute to my son. I'm proud of my son, Lord Lamont and my son ethan and uh his siblings they're doing well and my biological children proud of them too and any youth out there that's man that got some kind of sense and be be thankful for the youth you know we call down protection for those that might not be there too we, we gotta we ain't gonna forget about them you know you know some these sometimes these youth just need love man they just need guidance you know uh, some of these like young brothers and young sisters that might be a little lost they just need someone in their life to show them that they care and sometimes that's all these youth need it's just this to show that someone cares you know our presence alone can be an impact a righteous impact so again i'll keep those keep those updated on the volunteering and uh look for the book session chapter five and this is chapter four and uh thank those for coming in to another edition of ebx discussion and again book session so Keep lifting, keep striving, keep being strong. Remember, we can start right where we are, you know. Again, just throw that, that don't, don't think about the resources we have. Don't look at what is, what's in front of us because it'll keep us from seeing what's beyond, especially if it's, it's a righteous goal that great divine has for us. Remember, all the righteous things we do are stored up in that divine bank, just waiting to be spent. So just keep doing and be patient, you know. And just let things flow. And it'll come. You're doing great things. You have that confidence in that great divine. You know great things will come for ourselves, our families, and our children. So that's my that's my thought. And uh, thank those for coming in. Current subscriber, new subscriber. Anybody that view. And, my, and, I, and man, I thank those. I, I give, you know, great energy from that great divine. You know, for my family. Brothers and sisters in the world online. My children's mothers. Man, again, family, brothers and sisters all over the world. May we please keep that ultimate peace in your part of the world, wherever we are right now. Salute!